The snow going to be limited to the higher elevations leading us through the day. I think limited in terms of accumulation, bringing us into Saturday evening. Overnight, watch this, starting to clear that out. And this is what I think people are looking for. They're finally saying, you know what, enough is enough. And the sunshine is going to return by Sunday. Our eyes are really bugging out with every model output that's coming. So this is certainly going to be a big event, something we're going to track for the next few days. Coming back live here, I want to show you now, this area is actually so prone to high water. They have these permanent signs on the side of the roadway, and they simply just flip them down. On top of that, DOT crews about an hour ago placed two more road signs just to deter folks from some of the dangers of the high water that's right around that curb. I wish everybody could have just seen us shaking our heads during that <laughs> entire story. So but, much of your life <laughs> wasted as a child. Right, right. And apparently energy and water on top of that. I'm not going to clean dishes anymore. That's it. 56 degrees. That's what we're forecasting at later on this afternoon. The winds are certainly going to be whipping around. These white lines, these arrows here, those are wind vectors. And the longer they are, the higher the wind speeds are. They're all going to be coming in from the northwest, so we still drive in that cold Canadian air mass. We've seen DOT trucks passing us all morning long. They've even been plowing at times, and they're going to continue to do 12-hour shifts, officials say, until this event ends tomorrow morning. This is kind of how El Nino transpires. Okay. Generally how it works is the first half of the winter season you get unseasonable warmth. Second half of the season you get a lot of precipitation, which we've which seen, we and you see a lot cooler temperatures. Now that we're into spring, sure, we should see things warming back up, but we're still getting a few shots of cold air. The temperatures, that's going to be the major factor. We were talking about how they were slightly warmer today, but as we head into the overnight hours, that's when things are certainly going to drop. We're looking at this explainer here to show you what is to come. First, it's actually starting out as rain, going through a warm column of air, and then it's going to start to hit that cooler air mass towards the surface, creating first the freezing rain, and then as we go dropping below that 32 degree mark, it's going to transition into snow. So that's the biggest threat in terms of power outages as well, with the weight of the snow already on the tree limbs, as well as the power lines. Things could be coming down. We're already having reports of up to 1,500 folks in Jackson County without power. I'll tell you about this dog. Oh, there, there he is. is. Wow. 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 <laughs> All right, eight months ago, Fat Vincent was 38 pounds. Now, Vincent had high cholesterol and was depressed after his owner had died, and we just had that reaction. But K9 Angels Rescue of Houston took him in, and look at him now. He's trimmed down to 17 pounds with the help of water aerobics and walks. Now he's almost ready for his forever home. He just needs to lose one pound. That's it? He only has to go one more? Look at that. That is inspiration. That is inspiration. That dog was gigantic. Get to the gym, folks. I, I wow. used to have a little hot dog like that, a dachshund. 37 pounds? No. That's but, not a hot dog. That's a chili dog and then, you know, a side <laughs> of chicken. And <laughs> the windshield values down probably into the single digits in the early morning hours. If you're planning on heading outdoors, we want to make sure that we bundle up and in a big way. The heaviest of coats, the hats, the scarves, as well as the gloves. We're still telling folks to be apprehensive if they're thinking about going out on the roadways. Ice is on the surface and is covered by blowing snow due to yesterday's high winds, so the road still could be treacherous and unmanageable. Finally getting that consensus, finally grabbing a little bit of confidence in terms of the accumulation. We just had our latest model run come in just about six o'clock. The majority of them still hovering around that 10 inch mark, but you see that European model, one of the outliers, but still upwards of 20 inches. Wow. Something we're going to closely monitor along with the ice implications. Stick with us on WLOS all afternoon and evening. Now, your News 13 Skywatch weather. Good Saturday morning, folks. A gorgeous shot right now from the Lester Carpet Tales News 13 Skycam Network out of Rosman at the Pizzer Astronomical Research Institute. But you see a chill to the air, 26 degrees right now, and everybody across the mountains is seemingly below the freezing point, so there may be just some frost on your windshield this morning, but overall we're going to thaw things out fairly quickly. Later on this afternoon, we're actually going to be right about our seasonal averages, and this is just the start to a very big warm up that's on the way as we head into the upcoming work week. Now we are quiet just to start, maybe just some scattered cloud cover overhead, but overall we're going to keep things on the clear side for the majority of the daylight hours. It's later on in the afternoon, bringing us into the evening. That's when our next system does start rolling through. High pressure going to dominate up and down the eastern seaboard but right now an area of low pressure situated in the Great Lakes region is going to slide east towards the Ohio Valley and there's an associated cold front that's going to sweep across our region bringing us into about eight 
9 o'clock this evening, and that's when we start to see some of the activity picking up. But it's going to be very minimal. No reason to cancel any of the outdoor plans. Let's put this into motion for you now to show you when, where, and how long that rain is really going to be lasting. By lunchtime, we're still seeing those thin, high-level clouds. These are fair weather clouds, nothing in terms of activity. But later on this afternoon, you're first going to see that cloud cover increase with a northwesterly flow, some scattered showers, especially across the higher elevations. And then as we head into the later portions of the afternoon and early evening, that's when things can become a little more isolated. And then in the overnight hours, that's when the brunt of the storm system is going to start rolling through. But brunt is a relative word, not a whole lot in terms of an impact throughout the course of the day today. And by tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. on Sunday, we're looking at clear skies once again. And I think Sunday is certainly going to be the pick of the weekend. In terms of accumulation, it's very minimal to really nothing at all. Trace amounts at the lower elevations, higher elevations, especially as we head towards the northern mountains, could see upwards of about a quarter of an inch of rain. But things are going to be moving off fairly quickly, and we're going to see a dry pattern on the way as we head into Monday through Thursday of the upcoming work week. 53 degrees where we're forecasted at in Asheville. Seasonal averages today warmer still as we head into tomorrow afternoon, but then the 60s are going to be area wide come Monday and near 70 degrees Tuesday and Wednesday. I think by Thursday, that's when it's going to be seen for more locations than not. And then we're going to pay the price with some of the warmer weather for the end of the week with a few chances of scattered showers. Welcome back. All this week, the News 13 morning team is giving back. We're highlighting some of our favorite charities and philanthropic organizations by stepping in to lend a hand. I was fortunate enough to get out on the kickball field with Special Olympics athletes right here in Buncombe County, and they taught me a thing or two about competition and friendship. Wolves on threes. One, two, three. Whoa! Whoa! Get going, get going, get going. And just like that, a sunset game of kickball was underway. We have a good team and we're just going to play our, our game. These athletes follow a simple message for competition. Guess what? Never touch first base. Never touch. We don't have replay here. We should. We should. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Special Olympics motto. Let me win. But if I cannot win. Here it comes. Give me the fastball. Let me be brave in my attempt. Oh, she did it. Ethan, go get it. Good job, Sims. No matter what kind of day you've had, you can come out here and watch these uh, participants and see the smiles on them. And happy. You're going to be happy? Yeah. The smiles are contagious, that's for sure. And so are the cheers that come before. Oh, good job, Andre. During and oh, after awesome. each play. It's uh, fun and it's competing. The competitive spirit of these athletes even got the athlete and me to come there out. There you go. Oh, good kick. And I couldn't get past them. What a kick! It's a hard-fought game, and the dedication shared by these teammates has turned into much more. Well, I enjoy the team, and I, um, I love them so much. They make a wonderful friends to me, and they have a wonderful heart. All of us friends are together, and we love it. Go, go, go! Well, it's hard to call it work when we get to do things like this. I first want to thank everybody that allowed me to come play. And while I did get picked last for the team, it was nothing shy of a great afternoon. If you're interested in volunteering for the Special Olympics or simply want to learn more about donating, you can log on to WLOS.com and click on News Links.